Good day and welcome to PHPedia Videography Challenge. I'm Kechi Okafo, your host. And with us today is an icon in the entertainment industry, Mr. Ayo Ani Mashel. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Okay, so can you tell us a little about yourself? Um, okay, um, perhaps I should um, tell you my um, um, journey into entertainment and um, yeah. how, how um, I started the business. Okay, um, my name is Ayo Anima Shao. I'm the CEO of Smoke Promotions. Okay. Um, executive producers of um, ETV and the Eddies. And um, okay, I will still refer to Hip Hop World Magazine, publishers of Hip Hop World Magazine. Okay. Um, um, how did I start? Yeah. Start how you want to know? What yeah. You know? Okay. Um, I, um, music has always been my passion. I started um, by uh, a long time ago, many years ago, um, when I was um, 13. That was when I started writing lyrics, you know, um, you know, to songs, you know, and um, reciting all the lyrics and all that. Okay. And later it developed to uh, a magazine. It developed to a magazine because um, I wanted to, you know, people were coming to me to write lyrics for them. And um, I kept writing the same lyrics all over, over and over again. And um, I got tired. Then I started to copy for them with all my pocket money. Oh. I was 18 going on 19. Wow. Then, you know, and uh, I thought I should just, you know, compile all the lyrics to all the songs and publish, you know, and it, it was a very tough decision, you know. And yeah. Just as it was getting tough, I was lucky to read a book, you know, and um, mm -hmm. I just got a lot of energy and strength and I got inspired by the book. It's called um, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Uh, okay, that okay. I can actually really do this. There was no money at that time for me to do this, but um, I was lucky to get 1,000 uh, from someone uh, which um, I borrowed and um, he didn't just borrow me. He collected everything I had to borrow me. I mortgaged everything I had. My, um, Video player, my no, my um, my um, it's called three in one. Then he has radio cassettes, you know, and you could watch TV three by three inch black and white TV. Interesting. Then, you, know, you know, he got that for me, and he got my music box, you know, for me, and that, and gave me the one thousand I have, which at that point was not even enough to uh, uh, print the three hundred copies I wanted to print, but it was a starting point. So I got stuck, and um, you know, at the day of the launching. I couldn't even appear because they were still printing, you know. So I cried all through and everything. And um, afterwards, I was able to raise the balance, you know, um, to print. But I still had some money to give them. So what I did was, I got um, um, a wheelbarrow. Okay. You know, I told them to give me some copies. Put some of the copies in the wheelbarrow. Took it to the market, sold, then came to college with me. This was in 1989. 1980. You mentioned you started at 18. Were you in yeah. school or something? Yeah, I was in school. I was in, uh, at, that time, was that? I w at that time, um, I was in Canada Polytechnic. At that time, I was in Canada at that time. You know? Okay. You know, um, I went on to finish. I went on to pursue my education. I served in So you were schooling and doing all yes, that? Yes, I was schooling. And my parents were telling me that I didn't need to do this because um, um, they didn't say they couldn't pay my school fees. But then I just wanted to get something done. You know, I that was to, your passion. It was my passion. It was just passion. I just wanted to do it. I just wanted to sell it. I saw a gap. You know, there were some books there, but the lyrics were very, very wrong. And I thought I could just, you know, meet the demand. You know, and all that. And afterwards, you know, during my um, um, service year, you know, I I did another publication. Then I already, you know, registered some promotions when I was twenty three. Oh you really? Know. Yeah. Were you done yeah. with school then? I was done with school, you know, yes. But you I said I was in your service. Yes, okay, yes, yes. yes. And, uh, so I came to um, um, Lagos. I, for many years, I was writing, you know, for a year plus actually, I was writing for film magazine, you know. Um, so not throughout as a staff. those times you were in Kaduna? I was in Kaduna. Okay, I is that where you're from? No, I'm, I, no, I'm from Lagos State. Okay. Um, my parents, I was born in Illinois, but I, my uncle, was in Kaduna, you know, so I chose to spend some years there. Okay. You know. Great. You know, as I spent a couple of years in the north, you know, close, you know, I speak outside a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Nobody knows that part of me. 
Oh, nice. Yeah. So how would you say you spend most of your time? Like... Childhood? No, like right now. Right now. Most of your time, what do you do with your time? See, there's, there's so much to do now, you know, that... Um, but what's the basics? Okay. Like, what would you say? I, I spend like, my day? Yes. Okay, now, I go to the gym almost on a daily basis. I play squash. I found, a couple of years back, I found, you know, newfound, you know, interest in squash. So I play squash. So I go very early. I leave my house, like, um, at 6.30. I get there before 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. You know, so I play for one hour sometimes, sometimes two hours. Then I go to the office. And um, most of the time, I'm there, you know, um, working on my system, attending to meetings, you know, you know, and, um, you know, we are strategy meetings or, oh. you know, working on the new project and everything. Okay. You know, or, you know, talking to what you do when you're in the office. Yeah. Some of the time when I have meetings like today, I'm getting ready to go for the meeting, then I, I'm out there, you know, at the meeting. Okay. Now, um, weekend, I like to get on, during the week, it's always difficult. I have a family, you know, I have a wife and three children. Oh. But during, during the week, it's always um, uh, a challenge, you know, getting them early enough before they sleep because I get home really, really late. When I get home early, I get home around 10, 30 or 11, oh. you know, and oh, you're I used to very it. early, yeah, very, very early. So, so this weekend, I like to stay with them, you know, I like to, you know, um, take them out, you know, go swimming with them, go to the gym with them. Sometimes when they're coming from school, they stop by at my office when I'm there for an hour, then they go home. Okay. Yeah, so I try to balance it, and um, that's what I pretty much do, you know, um, that's why I spend my time. Then at night, um, sometimes, you know, that's when I'm in my element, I can actually really work, I can read, I can research, you know, I can, you know, send some mails, I can attend to so many things, you know, that you know, just make life complete. Okay, so where you are right now, is it actually where you thought you would be, like if you sit down, would you say this is where I thought I was going to be and I'm here right now? Oh, that question is quite tricky. Because uh, when you start, when I started, okay. the main you know, goal then was to sell a magazine. That was just a magazine okay. around the country. So when I was able to do that, I said new, I said new, new target. I wanted to sell in some other African countries and in the diaspora. I did that, you know. Um, at that point, it wasn't that successful because um, it, it the sales was not the problem. It's getting your money back. So and once you sell and you don't get your money back, what's the point? So, so I stopped, you know, um, that. Then, of course, Hip Hop World magazine went on, you know, and uh, there was time for Hip Hop World Awards, you know, which wasn't part of the plan, you know. And so. It, at every point of growth, I saw something else, okay. you know, and that I wanted to pursue that could be bigger and everything. And not that the first day I started, I wanted to be here, you know. Now, looking back after many years, I'm, I'm glad I'm here, okay. but um, it's still a journey. There's, there's still many things I want to do. Um, in fact, right now, we're working on a project that I'm feeling like I felt when I started it is all joining that look if i'm able to do this in the next couple of years it's going to be very very massive huh? so i feel like okay yes thank god for everything i've achieved um right now i don't feel like i've achieved much if i don't achieve this that particular you know so, so i've set new standards yes so at every point of success once you get there you set a new standard okay if you were to do it all over again what do you think you would have done differently Whew. honestly um I've had an amazing ride. Um, it's not been easy, but um, I've, I've had a pretty good journey. Um, so you don't think you would have done anything differently? It would have just been as it is? Mm, no. Um, th there's, there are certain variables that I, I wish I could change, you know, um, that I can't actually really change. Um, here, especially in, in the country, there, um, the manpower is I would work with different not everybody mm -hmm. you know some uh, oh my god okay I would I would have a partner okay I would have a partner 
um, it has to do this all over again. Cause, um, so you don't have a partner right now? No, I don't. No, and, and, and I'm saying so because um, I love what I do. I know what I do. I'm passionate about what I do. I do. If I had a business partner, I'd probably be making 10 times more. Okay. But do you think it's too late or something? It's not too late. I mean, something new is happening. It's taking everything to another level. Okay. Yeah, but before now, before now, you know, God was to do this all over again. That's what we And have someone time. who will be thinking about the money part of it and I'll be thinking about the business part of it. So now you're doing everything together. No, no. you see, what I've done all these years is just to um, to concentrate on doing it right. And yeah, money comes along with it. You know, okay. I've never been like, okay, it has to be money. I have to make a lot of money. <laughs> uh, I have to, I've never, I've never been driven by money. Okay. That's why I would say I've never worked in my life because it's never been a driving force. I do a lot of things for free. I do a lot of just things, things because I enjoy. And I encourage my guys to do things because, yes, let's just get it right. Let's just, you know, redefine these things. Let's just do it well. Let people just, you know, say, you know what, who did this? And they'll be like, okay, this guy's again. That's why I'm, that is the basic reason, the driving force why I've done everything. So if someone else was saying, why we're doing this and we're breaking ground, let's be making money by the side. We'll probably make a lot of money. <laughs> Not, it's only now, for the first time since I remember myself being in what they call business, you know, okay. um, that I've started thinking about, okay, yeah, I can actually make good money. Uh, and, and with due respect to, um, Everyone around me is not that we've not made money, but we can make 20 times more. We can make, and I'm not talking about millions in Naira, we can make millions of dollars. Nice. You know, millions of dollars. So if you've made several millions in, in Naira, you know, and that's what I've seen, that, that's, what, that's what we've gotten because uh, we're just doing it for the passion and we're just enjoying doing it. And money is coming along, so we're fine. Okay. If someone else, if I, uh, I knew 20 years ago what I know now, then I'll be in Forbes magazine. <laughs> You're getting there. Yeah, we are. It's not too late, like you said. <laughs> so what are you most proud of? My family. Oh, great. My family, I'm absolutely in love with them. My family and, I mean, everybody, my wife, my kids, they're amazing. I know, now. family is everything yeah, now. My, my God, I mean, you, you have only one thing twice. Um, my wife is amazing. Um, great have asked for better woman. Oh, I know she's uh, watching this right now. Oh, well, she, no, <laughs> And uh, my kids, they just, they just make everything complete for me. Okay. okay. So, what values are you committed to? Excellence, integrity. Very important. Um, uh, in all you do. You know, I was telling someone a couple of days back that we have to first check ourselves in words. Mm -hmm. All my life, I've never ever asked for any form of reward or gratification or anything from anybody that I'm supporting or doing what they call favor or helping. You know, I would not do that. Yeah. And you can ask all the people that have known me all through the years, all the artists that walked into my office when they didn't have a record label, when they were trying to make it happen, including to face and black face when they used to come and come and sing for money to United and say, bros, you know, let's call them to the bus stop and they'll take a cab to first start. You can ask all of them. Oh. You know, when you know when someone needs something from you, mm -hmm. you don't extort or exploit the person. You don't you just go ahead, go ahead and just do it. So, you know, um, I feel great when I'm in a position to help others because tips can turn. You don't no. you know, do it counter. and I feel privileged to to and um, uh, I feel there are problems that the president can also like corruption within your organization within your you know, um, small own world mm -hmm. the world you know, is your system you know integrity say it and let people mail like that you know so it's very very important okay so how would you say like you keep your feelings or emotions from clouding your decision making. How do you keep that away when you um, have to make decisions? Okay, very, very, very interesting questions. Uh, um, I don't run a one-man squad. Mm -hmm. Number one, and then two, when you have policies okay. guiding what you do, it's that at that time that when you're putting the policies together, there was no emotions. There, there are actually 
really, you know, going by the standards and what you have in your organization and all that. You have guiding principles and policies. Mm -hmm. When things come, and even if it's your brother, and you know that you have to follow this policy. You have, um, in, in an organization, you have um, um, a handbook, you know, that people can actually really, you know, study before you employ them. Know that, you know what, if you fight okay. here, they're going to have to ask you to go. If you're still here, they're going to have to ask you to leave. If you do this, so when somebody does that and you ask the person to go, when the next person does that, you don't want to set double standards. And they don't even need you. Because in my company, for example, where close to 100 have managers, I see people, we are not 500 or 1,000 yet, mm -hmm. but I see people in the company that I did not employ. Oh. You know, and they come to introduce to me, these are our new so and so because they know the, what we require, what we need at any point in time. They know the salary that these guys should be earning, you know, and they know, they know that we have a code of conduct. Okay. We have a code of conduct. So you can just introduce someone to me just so that I know the person and that. And when someone is about to get fired, you don't, everything doesn't have to come to me. So that is why, that's the only reason I can travel for a month with my family and the business still runs. Okay. I want the business to outlive me. So when I'm the only one taking all the decisions, signing all the checks, you know, and they can't even buy this or for if I'm not available, then the company is in trouble. Okay, you don't it. want to keep it like that. Yeah. Okay, nice. So who else would you recommend we connect with as a challenge? Uh, would you feel... Steve Babayko. Oh, look at the camera when you say that. Steve Babaiko. And who? And uh, Adekunle Ayeni. Okay. Yeah, they are great guys doing great. So things. just just two people. You want me to mention money? Oh, just <laughs> depends on you. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's fine for now. Okay, so you have viewers and those that are looking up to you. We need like few words of advice for them. Okay, stay focused. Do it. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't achieve it. Okay. Work hard. You okay. know, get your strategies right. Set big, big, big goals. Okay. Then dream. Allow yourself to dream. Allow yourself to imagine the kind of life you want to live, the kind of money you want to earn, and who you want to be with. Set back. Work back the plan and work towards it all the way. You can achieve it. Okay. So you've had it all. He said you should stay focused. You should set big goals, like you mentioned. Okay, guys, this will bring us to the end of this challenge. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Stay You're tuned welcome. and watch more videos on Pagepedia Videography Challenge. Thank you.